All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. All you need is a little juju. All you need is all you need. Welcome to a little juju podcast. This is the podcast all about black as spirituality, honoring our ancestors, honoring ourselves, decolonizing our spiritual practices and traditions and learning more about African traditional religions and religions of the diaspora. My name is Juju and I'm the host of this show. Obviously, I come to you as a hoodoo practitioner, a country conjurer and aborisha. Espiritista, all the things, bad bitch, witch, sorcerer, whatever you want to call it, that is me. And I'm so excited to bring you another episode, of course. Now, this episode is going to be a mini-sode, which I feel like I say often, like, oh, this episode is going to be short. It's going to be a mini-sode. And then I end up talking for an hour. No, that's not what's going to happen this time. Um, I've had a lot of requests to do some more reading of folk tales and children's stories, West African folk tales or Black American folk tale stories. So I'm going to read a couple West African tales today. I think they're both West African. Yeah. Um, for the children. I mean, for the adults. I mean, whoever wants to, but... I love the kids and so many of you all play the former episodes that I've had where I wrote read stories about Anansi the spider, etc. So I wanted to do something else that you could, you know, bond with your babies over or just enjoy for yourself. So this is going to be a mini sode, I promise. So I hope you all enjoy the stories today and... I just want to get right into it. Oh, but first, we definitely have to shout out our patrons this week um, because y'all really came through and I'm just so appreciative of those of you who donated. Okay, so shout out to my patrons. Big shout out to Dalton Jones. Thank you so much for becoming a patron. Shout out to Jessalyn Brown. Thank you, Jessalyn. Shout out to E. Marie for upping your pledge. I appreciate you. Shout out to Dion Hills, Grace Obey. Shout out to Jessica Noel for upping your pledge. Appreciate you. Shout out to Charlize Dawson, Just LaShawn, Maya Smallwood, Coretta Tots, Latasha Stoney, Gertie. Hey, Gertie. Shout out to Dontre Houston, Dominique Ford. Shout out to JW. Shout out to everyone on YouTube can see me squinting. So you see that I have bad eyesight. <laughs> Shout out to Jennifer Muth, I believe. Shout out to Jasmine Carter for upping your pledge. I appreciate you. Shout out to Kay, C. Packard, Adriana Queen, Sam, Ashley Bland, Hammy Norze. Thank you for upping your pledge. Shout out to Ashley Dozier. Shout out to Stephanie Wilkins, Rose Goddess, Jeffrey, Sheer, Jillian, Neria, or Naria White, Sands, Maya Sheree, or Mia Sheree, or Sheree, Brianna Mallory, Paula Do Prado. Shout out to Shonda Williams for upping your pledge. K, Irie J, Boo, Heaven L. Fisher, Sabrina Turner. Soraya J. Metcalf, thank you for upping your pledge. Shout out to Ashley M., Katara Howard, Stephanie Wanderlust, Bria Dunlap. Um, shout out to Lauren Crimes for upping your pledge. Brianna, Tamia Williams, Jalen, Elosa, Elosa Lopez, Austin Jones, Maya, Maya Wilkes, um, Rashida Grant. And I think that is all. Thank you so much to my patrons. As I always say uh, every every week, I appreciate you all so much. And I do not take the energy of money lightly or abundance. So I'm very grateful to all of you who are putting energy towards me for the show. I'm sending that energy back to you tenfold. So get all the good juju, all the abundance that you want as you are sharing it with me. I speak that whatever it is that you need to accomplish, whatever it is that you want to do, may you have the resources, whether they be financial or whatever they are, may you have the resources to be able to do your thing successfully. So I speak that over you and ask that you receive that in love. Um, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone always who donates to me um, through the Cash App or through Venmo. I say a little prayer for you too, so thanks. So I just love reading folk tales. I love reading stories. I think we get to learn a lot about, depending on where the folk tale is from, you know, these stories tell us how people lived. They talk about what the morals were in that particular place at that time. They just talk about how, you know, people were with each other. And we can learn a lot about ourselves through these tales. It kind of reminds me even just of last episode, if you've listened, um, the one that was about words from yesterday. And we talked about the importance of Proverbs. I feel the same way about stories and lore, folklore, because you just get so much wisdom. And knowing that we come from a oral tradition, these are our... Our understandings of ourselves, our practices, our religions, our beliefs were told through folk tales. They were told through lore. They were told through storytelling and griots and and proverbs. So I thought that this would be a good follow up from last episode to just bring back some some story time. Um, And so the first story that I want to read is called Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ear. Um, And this one's just kind of a it's a cute it's a cute story. Um, and this is a Nigerian folktale. I'm not exactly sure where in Nigeria, but this just says it's a Nigerian folktale. So I hope you all enjoy. Why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. If you live in the rainforest climates of West Africa, you will be very familiar with the buzz of the mosquito in your ears on hot, humid evenings. Personally, I'm going to extend that to the South as well. I'm I'm very familiar with mosquitoes in my ears. (laughs) Even if there's only one mosquito and only one person in an area as large as a football field, the mosquito always seems to find that person's ears and buzz in it. If you've ever slapped yourself in the face because of a mosquito, you know what I'm talking about. So here's the story that explains the mosquito's attraction to the ear. A very long time ago, when Ear was a beautiful woman and ready for marriage, there were several suitors wooing her. There were big creatures, there were small creatures, there were fast and sleek creatures, and there were slow ones. But they all professed their love for Ear and demonstrated their skills. And there was such an impressive array of skills that Ear had a difficult time making a decision. Then along came Mosquito. I would like you to be my wife, proposed Mosquito. Ear was so offended by this affront. Look around you, she cried. Of all the people and creatures in the whole world, what makes you think I can entertain a thought such as you? Ear was distressed. Marry you, she continued. You will be dead before the week is over. You're not strong enough for me. You're weak and I would never marry you. Ear was exhausted from this tirade and she fell into her seat, fanning herself vigorously like she was trying to get any image of Mosquito out of her head. Meanwhile, Mosquito was really hurt by all that Ear said. It was very embarrassing to be talked to like that in front of all the other creatures who were all big and strong and they're all giggling and whispering to each other. Apparently they all agreed with ear. Mosquito would never make it. He'd be dead before the week is over. And though Mosquito slunk away, he said, we'll see about that. And from that day forward, whenever Mosquito sees ear, he flies up to her and says, emire mi otiku which in English means, here I am, and I'm not dead. The end. I thought that story was so cute. I will, uh, I found it online, and I will link it, of course, in the show notes. But I really love the stories that give explanations for why certain things happen, just everyday things that maybe we don't think about, or, you know, just life occurrences. I love the I love the the folk tales that describe those kinds of events, those very small things like why a mosquito check to the ear? Like what? <laughs> That's so cute. So I hope you all enjoyed that as much as I did. So the next folk tale that I want to read is actually an African American folk tale, and it's in the book Mules and Men by Zora Neale Hurston. And this one is entitled How the Snake Got Poison. 
Well, when God made the snake, he put him in the bushes to ornament the ground. But things didn't suit the snake, so one day he got on the ladder and went up to see God. Good morning, God. How do you do, snake? Ah, ain't so many, God. You put me down there on my belly in the dust and everything trods upon me and kills off my generations. I ain't got no kind of protection at all. God looked off towards immensity and thought about the subject for a while. Then he said, I didn't mean for nothing to be stomping you snakes like that. You got to have some kind of protection. Here, take this poison and put it in your mouth. And when they stomp you, protect yourself. So the snake took the poison in his mouth and went on back. So after a while, all the other varmints went up to God. Good evening, God. How you making it, varmints? God, please do something about that snake. He's laying up in the bushes there with poison in his mouth and he's striking everything that shakes the bush. He's killing up our generations and we're scared to even walk the earth. So God sent for the snake and told him, Snake, when I give you that poison, I didn't mean for you to be hitting and killing everything that shaked the bush. I gave you that poison and told you to protect yourself when they tromples on you. But you be killing everything that moves. And I didn't mean for you to do that. The snake say, Lord, you know I'm down here in the dust. I ain't got no claws to fight with. Ain't got no feet to get me out the way. All kind of feet is coming to trample me. And I can't tell who my enemy is and who is my friend. You give me this protection in my mouth and I use it. So God thought it over for a while. Then he says, well, snake. I don't want your generations all stomped out and I don't want you killing everything that moves either. Here, take this bell and tie it to your tail. And when you hear feet coming, you ring your bell. And if that's your friend, he'll be careful. If it's your enemy, it's you and him. So that's how the snake got his poisons. And that's how come he got rattles. Bitty bitty bend my story is in. Turn loose the rooster and hold the hen. <laughs> I love that story it's so sweet again we just get to see another explanation for why things are the way that they are um, how the snake came to have poison in his mouth and then it also just makes you and kind of creates relationships I think I'm getting kind of deep but with these particular animals so that you almost think about them a little bit differently like the way that stories so often humanize like we kind of get to see the humanity of the snake or the humanity of the mosquito and why they do the things that we do instead of seeing them as pests or dangerous. But just people or just just entities, just beings existing, living that we are to be in in right relationship and respect. Um, so that is all that I have for y'all today. I just wanted to share these stories with you and I hope that you enjoy them. We'll be back in a couple weeks with some content. I'll talk to y'all a little bit about what I've been going through and everything, um, which has been really amazing and also very eye opening for me. So I definitely want to tell those, talk about that in those stories next time. But for now, I hope you all enjoyed. If you would like to follow me, of course, you can follow me on Instagram at a little juju podcast. Hopefully when I put out this episode, uh, my my page will be back in action at it's juju bay. If not, just keep in the back of your mind because my page is going to come back. It was just disabled by Instagram, but I'm working with them now to get it back. Um, you can also follow me on juju bay at Facebook. I'm also it's juju bay on Twitter. And of course, you can hit me up on my website at it's juju bay dot com. I-T-S-J-U-J-U-B-A-E dot com. And there I have all of my offerings, all of my things. You can sign up for my uh, newsletter to stay abreast on what's going on over here. And I, that's it. So appreciate y'all. Send you peace, send you love, send you blessings. And remember, all you need is a little juju. Later. Camper, no say. And I'll never, never get played. Play.